Hi, my name is Teresa Santa Lucia. It is February 29th, 2020, it's leap year. I'm here on behalf of the Hansen Historical Commission, and this year is Hansen's 200th anniversary. And as part of the uh, celebration, we are reaching out to some of Hansen's uh, long-term residents and asking them to provide us with some oral histories. And today I am very happy uh, to be here with Don Howard. And uh, so Don, we're just gonna launch right into it. And I'd ask that you give me your full name and your date of birth and where you were born. Okay, I'm, I'm Don Henry Howard, H for a middle. And uh, I was born in Cleveland, Ohio, back in 1937. And uh, it progressed from the part that uh, my parents were from here from and Hanson. From Hanson. And uh, during the war, they went out to Cleveland, and my brother Dean was born out there. My, uh, Dean and I were born in Cleveland. And, uh, and when I was uh, eight years old, uh, my grandfather, who owned uh, a Boston Electric Heating up on Warren Avenue in Whitman, had a difficulty, and my father and mother brought us all back there. And, when I was eight years old, and and uh, I was here in Hanson for about a month, I think, before we went to Connecticut. And so then David was born in Connecticut, and then from Connecticut, uh, I went from the second grade in, in Cleveland, came out here to Hanson, and was in the second grade in here for a month, and then I went to Connecticut in the second grade, and then the fourth grade, I came back here to Hanson. I'm just okay. trying to get trying to get it coordinated. There's a lot of moving there. around. <laughs> you know. So just to lay the groundwork, can you give me the uh, names of your parents? Well, that's what I was going to go to, George okay. and Martha Howard. George and Martha Howard. Um, and you've mentioned some of your siblings, but could you um, list your siblings for me? Well, I was going to say my father's from England. Your father's from England. And uh, okay. my mother's from, and she was born in Boston, I believe, and moved to Whitman when her father started the business there. Okay. And so my grand, my grand, my father's father bought the land across from Richter's house on East Washington Street. And the Browns lived there for years, and he it was a what, barn. Do you know what number that is? I Just can't remember the number. It's, okay. It, uh, no, I can't. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, my my grandfather built that house into a house. Mm -hmm. So when my father came over from England, he was only four years old. They had the house to live in. Okay. And. Uh, then uh, Dwight was born. I, I have uh, three brothers, Dean, David, and Dwight. And then uh, Dwight was born here in Massachusetts. And then in 1948, my mom bought the yellow house on Winter Street, uh, 884. 884. Uh, it's not too far from the, across the street from the ski shop. Mm -hmm. uh, the big barn there, it's a big barn, a big house. That's where the four of us grew up. And my father built the house around the corner from uh, right across the street from uh, Christopher Lane, where the gazebo is now, 880, I mean, 690 East Washington Street. He built that in 1935, before we went to Ohio and came back. And then from there, it, it progressed. I went to Hanson Schools. The fourth grade, I went into the portable up the next door to the LZ Thomas. Okay. And then uh, I don't know if Alan Clements and somebody's been here beforehand. I can't remember when we were moved, but uh, I went to the, I had to repeat the fourth grade, so I was in the fourth grade at the Anson Town Hall. And we downstairs. have a picture of you, actually, um, that uh, Alan Clemens brought in during his interview of your fourth grade class okay. together in front of the town hall. Okay. And uh, we have you identified in that photo. Okay, so well, uh, no. You haven't but, changed it all. Because I know, I remember <laughs> I went to fourth grade there at the Hanson yeah, Town Hall right. before going back to L.Z. Thomas. Okay. And uh, then we graduated from the first class to graduate from the uh, Indian Head School in 1952. And back then, uh, we were, uh, I, I could go either go to Whitman High School or I could go to, to uh, Hanover. And being uh, I was so close to Hanover, and Charlie Mann lived across the street from me, uh, I got the ride to school in Hanover. That's where I went to high school. And did Charlie Mann work in Han Hanover no, at the school? He, he, was, he, was, uh, he was a senior when I was a freshman. Oh, okay. Um, and he drove, because there were no buses back then. Right. So he drove me to school my freshman year. 
And I was fortunate to be held back a year, so I got my license my sophomore year so that I was able to drive myself to, uh, to school the rest of the three years. Okay. And uh, that's where I met my wife. Okay, you met your wife in high school? In high school. And uh, we've been together for 61 plus years. Congratulations. And, uh, what is your wife's name? Claire. Claire Howard. Okay. Well, Claire, Claire Louise Felix was her name. Felix was her last right, her maiden but, name. But she now is Claire Howard. Has been for years. And I forgot to mention the grandkids. I have six grandkids. We'll start with your kids. Okay. So uh, you guys I, got married. What year was that? That was 1958, uh, April 26. And where did you get married? And we got married at St. Andrew's Church in Hanover. Okay. And uh, then from there on, I had Diane. It was uh, Diane uh, Nickel now and uh, Don Marie uh, Bloss is my second daughter, and Daryl Howard, who lives down on Puritan Road. We're, for, we're very fortunate to have all the kids living in Hanson. They all have homes, and all the grandkids are around Claire. I mean, this is something that's unheard of nowadays. That's right. And we're fortunate. And how and, many grandchildren do you have? We have six. Six grandchildren. And uh, there's uh, Mary and Jason, there's, uh, What's their last names, just so that we have the full record? Okay, there's Mary and Jason Nickel, and uh, there's uh, Dana and Kaylee Bloss, and uh, Corey and, and Cassie Howard. They live down on, on uh, Puritan Drive. And uh, that's what's been gone for going on. And uh, that kept Claire and I going for years because of having the grandkids grow up and everything. I was associated with a lot of the people in town for the simple reason we went to all the sporting games. Mm -hmm. And it, was, it made it very fabulous for us. Mm -hmm. It was excellent, to be, be honest with you. I loved it. And uh, from there on, I worked for Earl Simmons in Hanover for 10 years. And then I worked doing for- Doing what kind of work? At, uh, construction work. I was outside doing uh, uh, houses, I mean not houses, but excavations, driveways, roads, you know, and parking areas and so forth like that. Sewerage systems and everything. And then in 1967, uh, the highway surveyor in Hanover asked me if I wanted to go to work for the Hanover Highway Department. And unbeknownst to me, uh, I had been working for them every winter. Instead of working for a contractor, I was working for a town in wintertime, plowing and sanding roads and, mm -hmm. and running the machines for water breaks and working on emergency stuff like that. And then uh, the, uh, after I did that, I, I had 10 years between there and, let's see, 10 years for Earl Simmons and then 23 years for the town. So I had 33 years of working in the town of Hanover. Then I went to working for uh, John Holy and Sons in, in Rockland, all over New England for the waterworks. And then uh, from John Holy's, I went to PA Landers, mm -hmm. where I finished working there for 15 years. And I, I dug out, a, I worked for Skip, and my last job was working up in Rockland for the Hannigan Reservoir. We dug a reservoir out up there. Hmm. And uh, that was interesting work for me. Yeah. And uh, in between there, it was uh, it was very nice. Uh, and uh, in 2007, I retired and uh, laying in bed in 2008 in the springtime. Uh, I woke up and I turned to Claire. I said, uh, you know, seeing things that are happening around town and I'm interested. I think I'll run for selectman. And she said, oh, shit. <laughs> Excuse, excuse the language, but that's, quite that's all right. what she said. <laughs> it's an understandable reaction. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I talked with uh, uh, Mrs. Harris, who was a clerk at the time, and asked her about it. He says, oh, you know, you'd be a good person to, to be a selectman. So I ran, and I was So that was in 2008 that, was, that you 2008, ran. Right. And was that the first time you'd ever run for office in No, in prior to that, I forgot. I was on the Board of Health back in the late 70s. Uh, I got on the Board of Health, working for a private company. I found out a lot of things that builders and contractors and developers were doing, especially putting in sewerage systems for houses. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
it wasn't proper. And uh, that's one of the things I, uh, I was really big on because when a person buys a home, they should have a sewage system that should last them forever, mm -hmm. uh, and providing it's taken care of. And uh, they, weren't, they would cut in corners to make more money. Mm -hmm. I'm getting myself in trouble, see? No, that's And good. I don't care. I mean, and that makes sense that you, you and your... Well, I was a concerned individual about right. the homeowners when right. you buy a house. Right. So uh, I got on the Board of Health, and I was on there for almost five years, and I had to get off of it because I was, I was threatened, I'll be honest with you. And uh, it wasn't worth for, for me to get involved. And during that time, I was very friendly with uh, uh, Keith Doby. He was from Ashfield. And uh, he, what he was, he worked for the Department of Public Health in Boston under Paul Anderson when he was a Boston in Massachusetts. And uh, by him living in Marshfield, if I had any problems on the Board of Health wise, I had his phone number and what he'd do is he'd stop and see me on his way home to Marshfield at night and we'd take care of the situations, which worked out very fine for the mm -hmm. time I was there. Um, towards the end, under the Board of Health though, Dick Hoyer and uh, Jim Daly, the other two members at the time, there was the only three of us. Uh, the open burning law went into effect and you couldn't burn anything. Right. And uh, what, what happens was we wound up going to Boston a couple of times because the state was gonna fine us for the burning, which would have been costly, so. You couldn't, the, the, the town couldn't burn anything or you no, saying individual residents? No, open resident? burning stopped. And see what was happening was people were setting the dump on fire every night. Yeah. And uh, that's totally illegal and the, and the town was, uh, I mean the state was clamping down on us and telling us you can't do this anymore. Right. So we got a hold of Calvin Overlock, he was from uh, uh, Dartmouth I believe it was. And he had these little containers which are now still up to the, the dump. The to get the trash taken away. Mm -hmm. And we were on Tier 1 with Rochester down there in uh, Wareham. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, it was Rochester, actually, for depositing in the, the trash, which worked out good, believe me. The only disappointment with the dump to me today is, uh, I don't know what it is, but I go twice a week myself, personally, because I buy the orange bags that they have and uh, a lot of people have the, the trash picked up. And I can't understand why people are having their trash picked up when they can do away with it for nothing. And by buying the orange bags, it helps pay for the operation of the, uh, the uh, transfer, transfer station. station. And uh, in the long run, if that would happen, it would make it easier on the tax rates because when we wouldn't have to pay the difference, you know, on, on the taxes on the transfer station. Right. And why I like that is because uh, uh, when the trust, when that opened up and the state found out what we were doing, uh, I had the opportunity to go on around to uh, Kingston, Duxbury, Plymouth, um, Lowell, Hanover, Situate, and uh, to see the operations of all their uh, trash stations also. And Hanover's, I mean, Hanson's one of the best ones. Because you drive in, deposit your trash, and you drive out. Deposit your recycling. Yeah, well, the recycling. Yeah. Well, the trash, too. Yeah. I mean, one's right. orange and one's the paper, the bags uh, for newspapers and That's stuff. That's right. Uh, some of the other places, uh, I'll take Hanover, for instance. You have to drive in, pull in, and there's a big pitch. You have to get out of the car and throw the rubbish. Then you have to get back in the car and back out into traffic, and it's very inconvenient. Mm -hmm. Hanson's a drive through like McDonald's or Burger King. Mm -hmm. It's just in and out, it's quick, all right? And that's enough of the trash, but, so, but I so wish more people would use it, okay. I'll be honest okay. with you. Okay, so your, your time on the Board of Health, um, and then later in your career you decided to pivot to the selectmen, and you ran for selectmen. How long were you I was a uh, I was a selectman for 10 years. And and I, overall, how was that experience for I, you? Excellent. Okay. Uh, I lost. I, I believe in term limits for one thing. I didn't realize. That I didn't really expect to be on there that long, but when I was there, I enjoyed it. I, I really did. I mean, the different things that you wound up doing. But in the meanwhile, in 2012, I think it was, I ran to become a water commissioner also. So I was doing two water commissioner 
jobs at the same time. I mean, two two jobs, two with, jobs. The, with the town. And uh, right now, I'm still a water commissioner. I will be up until well, I'll have eight years in this year, this May, okay. and uh, my my term runs for another two. So I'll be ten years as a water commissioner also. And uh, I enjoy that. I really. And what do, do you like about being on the water commissioner? Why is it on well, the water it's, commission? Why? You know, water's you breathe oxygen, right, uh -huh. to live. Well, what's the next thing that you do? You have to have water to live. Right. In my mind, it's the most important thing in, in the world, to be honest with you. And I've been involved with it since 1957 when I started working with, with uh, Earl Simmons. And that, that's one of my main things in life, and that's why I want to stay a water commissioner. Uh, I intend to, and we're working on it now, to have a new water tank up on High Street. So we'll have two water tanks. For the simple fact, if uh, that tank goes down, or we have to, we had to close it down uh, in 2014 to take the lead paint off of it, inside and out. And we had to buy water from the city of Brockton. Well, the city of Brockton charges three dollars and eighty-one cents a thousand gallons. And the three months that we were off on water, we spent uh, I think it was three hundred and Forty some odd thousand dollars to the city of Brockton for the water for the three months. Mm -hmm. So I had the girls go back and then check the books on electricity or the pumps, how much it would have cost us for electricity for the three month period, and it would have only cost us a little over forty thousand dollars. So you can see the difference in uh, money okay. just for that three months. If we had to buy Brockton's water for a year, it would wipe out our entire budget of a million three hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's very economical to us to have another tank so that if you have to work on one, you can always operate on the other one. And last fall, we uh, had two wells drilled up off East Washington Street off of Old Pine Drive, which the road is in there up there now. And uh, we're in the process of uh, they're going to start coming back. And they did test it once, and uh, they ran it for 24 hours. And uh, we got uh, 300 gallons of in and out of it for 24 hours, and it recouped and refilled the aquifer in about 13 hours back up to the point where it's running right out of the top of the uh, pipe, the casing. It's unbelievable to have the, the water in that area. Mm -hmm. So that uh, it's a good well, but they have to do a 20-day test on it, which they're going to do uh, hopefully this spring before uh, so that we can get working on that so we can get the other wells working because all our water right now comes from uh, Main and, Fra and Franklin Street down there in the, on the southwest corner of Hanson and which is excellent water don't get me wrong it's, it's, it's good water but by having we're only allowed right now with those four wells that are there to use 750,000 gallons a day but that's period over a period of of uh, 365 days, it averages out because sometimes in the winter time you're only using 500,000, mm -hmm. but sometimes in the summertime <coughs> you're using 800. So that it averages out, so we're still legal. But by having the new well to be able to hook into the system, Hanson will be set. I'll say forever. All right, and uh, that that makes me happy. That's the other reason I'm staying on the, being a water commissioner. That's great. That's great. Well, thank you for your service on, on both the Board of Health and the Selectmen, and thank you for your continued service on the water. I think water is something that people often don't think about until they don't have it, or, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, you know, or they, uh, or, or it's... Uh, well, I, like I say, I think it's one of the most important things. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. The only other thing, I am on the Plymouth, the Central Plymouth County Water District Committee, which involves uh, seven towns, and I still go to that, and I'm still going to Old Colony Planning Council in Brockton. Great. So I'm still staying active for the town of Hanson, and I'm pleased to do it. I love doing it. Great. Um, can we talk a little bit about your growing up in Hanson? Um, some of the things that you remember as some of you Everything know, your highlights. <laughs> Everything was good. <laughs> well, did you play sports? No, did I played you? all kinds of sports. I played uh -huh. sports in Hanson. Uh, Hanson only had one field at that time, the Robinson Field. And... Uh, we played softball down there. I was a catcher down there for, I don't know, it was a year or two that we played mm -hmm. before, they, before they had any of the fields built in Hanson. 
I went to high school and played football all four years. I had track, I played baseball, and um, I, th I started out playing basketball, but I was too rough. Uh, they wouldn't let me play anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I kind of eliminated basketball. Uh, I had an excellent time in school. And like I say, uh, Claire and I got married. Well, we graduated in 1956, and we got married in April of, of 1958. So you can see there. Yeah. And, uh, um, what are some of the things that you remember as a child, um, maybe activities or events or you know, community-based events that you remember well, enjoying? Well, you know, back in those days, they didn't have the stuff that they have today. Like, uh, I probably would have played hockey. Mm -hmm. But they didn't have it back in that day. And uh, we weren't held back or anything. We always found something to do. But, uh, <laughs> you know, it's hard to think back now because I, was, I always kept myself busy. Yeah. Uh, my father had a big garden I helped him with. I have a big garden now. It's about 60 by 60 that I take care of. And I'm, I'm wa waiting to get out the road until it to get growing back in the garden this year. So even though I can't see too good, I can still grow stuff in the garden. Uh, I take care of my lawns today. I, I still do all of that stuff physically outside my house. So, And uh, I have a, a little Kabuta backhoe that I bought so that uh, I don't have to do any more pick and shoveling by hand because I'm too old to do that anymore. So, and I got a little golf cart with a dump truck on body on it like you find in a golf course mm -hmm. so that I can work in my yard with that too. So, that's, uh, okay. and, and as far as school goes, uh, we didn't have much in school. What about things like um, community events? Uh, were there many opportunities for the community to get together and gather? Well, know? I was in Cub Scouts, I was in Boy Scouts, and we did that, I can remember. Um, Where did you hold your meetings? The, the East Washington Street School for the Boy Scouts. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's where they had the Explorer Scouts, too, were up there, too, also. And uh, like I say, I had sheep. I was in 4-H, which I eliminated when I went into high school because I didn't have time for that. Well, another thing, too, I did I, uh, the Hanson uh, Public Market that was on the corner of Liberty Street and, and East, Washington. Uh, East Washington and West Washington Street where they met there. Uh, Helen Grant, she lived there, she, well her father owned it, Gordon Grant, and uh, that's one of the things I forgot to say, that uh, I got a job there when I got my license, hmm. and uh, I used to have a grocery route that ran from Tuesdays and Thursdays and Saturdays. I used to go to Whitman, I used to go to Hanover, uh, Norwell, Pembroke, and Hanson, and I did that three days a week uh, on a grocery route. When it was football season and baseball season, sometimes I had to have somebody fill in for me, but that's what kept me going uh, yeah. monetarily-wise while I was in high school. Do you it remember, made it out excellent. Do you remember when the Hanson um, market closed? So, so many people the Hanson, have- Hanson Public Market. Public so many people burnt. have mentioned it. It burnt yeah. down. Yeah. Uh, I can't give you the date. Uh, remember around what see. year? I was surprised, to be honest with you. It was just a little, because it was just the Hanson Public Market, there was Walkie store, and there was the other store down on Main Street, just mm -hmm. the three stores in town. And that's where all the people got all their food. Yeah, most people have mentioned it as, you know, a place that they saw their people, and it was sort of a central place yeah, in Hanson. Yeah, it was a get-together. Yeah. They had beer and wine there, and... Uh, Do you remember um, why it burned down? No, I don't, to be honest with you. Hmm. I know. I remember going up there and seeing it, and the tears were running down my face because my father had a stepbrother, George Vining, that worked there. That's why he got me the job when I was in high school. and Because uh, they also had an oil truck. Mm -hmm. So at 16 years old, I was delivering oil also around to the towns, the different around, which nowadays is a no-no. So, yeah, right. And, uh, but no, the little things like that. I'm trying to think of the day. I can't. Yeah. I can't for the life of me. I forgot about that. Uh, I know Helen was. It must have been three or four years after. So I graduated in '56. I bet that burnt down. 
before 1960. I'm, I'm guessing. Yeah. But okay. as Phil Robichaud, the fire chief, lived on the house right across the street that they fixed up from, used to be Leslie's store, which is now Danny Dell, uh, uh, Danny Dell construction places in there. Mm -hmm. And because uh, they had the one fire engine in the place, that that, that Bill Port building gets clobbered every time they fix it up. And somebody else runs into it. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's going on there. So, that's a difficult intersection. Yeah. 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 Well, th that's another by being in Old Colony planning. There's another thing too I like to bring up. Hanson only has one road, and that's uh, safe the safety road in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. It runs from Route 58 from Halifax to Whitman because it's the only road that has, it's wide enough to have a bike trail on uh, both sides of the road. And there is sidewalk on it that runs from Route 27 to JJ's pub area by both schools that are now still operating. Mm -hmm. And that's they're the only legal road in the town of Hanson, uh, according to the state. Yeah. And I feel bad for the people that are trying to walk on the street in front of my house on Winter Street because the, the traffic has quadrupled in the last four or five years. It's just unbelievable on the traffic that comes up and down the road now. Well, that's something I've noticed in these interviews that I've done with people is how many times people talk about their childhood in biking to places or walking with their mother you to can't some do place. It anymore. And that's really not something not that's. Safety part of our community now. Another thing, while I was a selectman too, of an old colony planning, I did get on the TIP program, the Transportation Improvement Program, uh, from the uh, top of the hill by the St. The St. Joe's Church, Route 58, to the Pembroke Town Line. Mm -hmm. It's 1.2 miles of McQuan Street. That It's almost on the TIP program now, which uh, initially cost uh, it would have been, I think, seven and a half million dollars, but the town's share would have been ten percent, which was seven hundred and fifty thousand. Uh, and hearing what's going on now, and I've been invited to a few of the meetings, it might go up to nine million now, so that hopefully that the town will be able to pick up the extra ten percent mm -hmm. for the rest of it, because it, what what it's going to do is it's going to give sidewalk for Hanson that you could go from Route 58 all the way to Route 53 in Hanover, and in Pembroke, mm -hmm. and be sidewalk. Yeah. And uh, I had things in the back of my mind to do something about that for uh, County, uh, County Road and uh, West Washington Street from uh, where they intersect with Home Street uh, from East Bridgewater and uh, have mm -hmm. sidewalk from those two towns. So East Bridgewater will be connected to Pembroke. Yeah, but it's, it's, down it's, County it's, Road, right? Yeah, yeah, that would be great. It's just all the way down uh, because there is sidewalk between Dunkin' Donut now and the Indian Head School so that they've only got to put it in from uh, High Street all the way to East Bridgewater. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that's another thing in the back of my mind that I'm working on still being involved with uh, Old Colony Planning. So. Now the t town has obviously changed since you were uh, when you you were a child. What are some of the things that you have seen that are positive, and maybe some things that you think need to be? Changed? Well, every, everything in the world is positive because you can't say that it's negative, uh -huh. because every day there's something new and there's a, something else you have to correct, and uh, I don't mind that. I mean, the things that uh, maybe should have been done earlier than later. Mm -hmm. But then again, too, that's because of the uh, concept of money nowadays. I mean, you have to pay the bills, and it's very difficult to do that, uh, knowing that from being a selectman. Mm -hmm. and, uh, because you can't raise the taxes. Well, you know how it is. You can't. You have to kind of have a happy medium right. and work along with it. Uh, but sometimes it's, it's too bad you can't. But I don't know. Yeah. I get kind of upset at that because of the fact that things should have been done earlier than later because they would have been done now, mm -hmm. and they weren't. So, uh, what are some of your favorite places in Hanson that you think are sort of treasures of Hanson? Well, they aren't treasures, but the Hitchin Post is a good eating place. Meadowbrook's a good eating place. I still go to Connie's every week with a friend from Hanover every week. Mm -hmm. and it's a good breakfast and it's a chance to talk and just enjoy life a little bit. So 
Um, the post office, I think, should be. Well, I, 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 <laughs> I'm trying to get some. Uh, in 2014, we put a water main in on, on. Uh, oh, what's the street down there? I can't think of it. Goes off of Route 58. Ties into Pleasant Street down the back. On um, Woodbine Avenue, mm -hmm. I think it is. I can't I remember. Anyway, the, down the end of it, there's uh, Hanson's not blessed, but the, we, what happens is on uh, by, being, by being in the Central Plymouth County Water District, Hanson owns or uses the northern uh, part of West Lake. Mm -hmm. The property line goes through it, so that there's uh, I think there's 12 or 14 homes on that top part of the lake, and six of them are on Woodbine Avenue. And uh, in 2014, they came to us and they needed water. Well, they got the water, but the problem is the poor people are still paying, they're paying for it themselves on a betterment loan. And it's wrong because the USDA down in Wayham, which I've been down there a few times, uh, if the population is under 10,000 people, a lot of times the, you can get uh, monies from the government. And uh, they keep denying me because they say the population is over. Well, I'm still fighting that also. Uh, it, it irks me, it really does. Because uh, I worked with Tom Kennedy. He's the one that steered me on the, on the different things. but. Uh, he sent me down to to uh, Wareham, down to all the USDA down there, and uh, I've argued with them for the fact because we have Brockton residents in Brockton. I mean, we have Hanson residents on water from Brockton, and we have Hanson residents on Rockland Abington water because of Route 14 on McCorn Street from. Um, Big Sandy Pond there, Rockland Abington owns, it's their water supply. And they pump it down through a 16-inch water main that runs from Pembroke all the way down to Route 58 and 14. And then it goes on Spring Street all the way down to East Washington, over to, no, Liberty Street, excuse me, down to Spring Street to, to uh, Beach Hill, mm -hmm. to Rockland. And uh, between the two of them, there's there's over uh, uh, pretty close to 250 residents that are on um, Brockton. They aren't on Brockton water. Mm -hmm. Okay, I mean they are on Brockton water and they aren't on Hanson water. So by subtracting the amount of residents that are on Brockton water from Hanson water, it puts a population of Hanson under 10,000 people. And that's what I'm fighting on now. I'm trying to argue with the government, and I don't know how it's going to come out. I really don't, but I feel sorry for the residents. The six residents now that are paying, I forget what it is, twelve hundred dollars a year for the mortgage to pay back the water that we put in because mm -hmm. of the fact Brockton, by raising and lowering West Palm Pond, and Pond, created a problem with the sewage systems. So it wasn't done by Hanson; it was done by. Uh, uh, the city of Brockton, hmm. and this is another thing I'm going to get into trouble for, but I don't care anymore. <laughs> no, it's just, I mean, people aren't... Well, you care about your the, time people here aren't in Hanson. They aren't taking the responsibility of things that they're being done. Mm -hmm. This is what the problem is. And uh, that's something that is kind of hard to correct when people have been doing it since 1964. That's right. And it's, uh, it's a battle. It really is. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to say too much, but I'm in enough trouble now. <laughs> as, you know, I think as the town grows up, you know, again, we're in our 200th anniversary. There, um, you know, it's a time to reflect on, you know, our history. No, I'm glad. I really am. And, uh, and it's, uh, uh, I like what's, I'm on the uh, Plymouth County Reuse Committee on uh, yeah. making the pack up there also. And that's coming along, it's coming along good. And uh, and that's something that's really interesting because that's a uh, the the hospital has had a 
you know, long history in, in the town, has been a pivotal point, and, you know, for a long time it was in disuse, and there was a lot of controversy on it. And it's nice that right now there's some really positive actions yep. um, in the works to make that area a place that the town can be And in time using. it will be, because yeah. between grants and monies like that, it won't be as that costly to the town. And uh, the, uh, the food pantry we have in Hanson, mm -hmm. uh, the, the Paul Nickel, did a lot of work on working on there, and it's one of the best ones in the state, I think, because of the fact of the uh, freezer that they can freeze food in there, and and then the cool food for the salad and materials and so forth. There isn't many food pantries in the state that have that ability, yeah. Yeah. and uh, it's going along great, and there's a lot of people using it, and I'm glad. Yeah. And it's a very out of the place place, and people can go, and they don't know what's going on, so. Yeah. Are there certain events that happen in Hanson or um, uh, activities that you have enjoyed participating in over? And I'm th thinking about different parades or different events that different groups have sponsored over Well, they've the always year. had the parades on Memorial Day. I, I did participate in 10 of them. I had the match. <laughs> As a selectman. As a selectman. Yeah. But that's a good thing. I mean, you get to see people, people see you. And uh, like I said, by Claire and I going to a lot of sports games, in town, there's a lot of people know us in different ages because of the fact that we're old and they're all younger. Mm -hmm. And uh, all the kids that played sports, they were fairly decent with it. So mm -hmm. you get a good rapport of everybody there. Yeah. You know, it was it was fun. It was really fun. Yeah. So. What are some traditions that Hanson has now that you think should be preserved? <laughs> traditions or or places? Well, the mill should be kept for one thing. And like I say, the Plymouth County Hoppy, uh, making a pack for Hanson, I think is going to be a great thing because uh, uh, the path that they're working on generally right now is from the water tank south uh, where the hospital was. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you go from the water tank north towards the town hall, there's a, it's a good half a mile where there can be trails put up in there. Yeah. And the, there's a portion of that land that abuts uh, Wampatuck Pond. And I was even thinking of, uh, and we have talked about it, having a dock there in that part of the land so that they could go from, boat from the, kind of from the town hall up to there. And then if there's some uh, concrete pads with shed roofs on it, with uh, barbecues or something in there, bolted down to the floor, Mm -hmm. uh, people could go up there and just have a picnic up there. I mean, there's a lot of things that can be done uh, with the use up there on that land. So uh, I'm glad I'm on that committee. It's, it's just, it's, and uh, I'd like to see more. Well, well I don't want to get into that. That's, a, that's another subject i got to stay away from. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. <laughs> what about, um, you mentioned the Thomas Mill. Can you give me some, uh, some Donnie stories? Donnie Ellis could tell you a lot about that. I uh, know, but what, do you remember it as a child? Did you well, I used going? to. Uh, there was a farmer's market there when yeah, I was growing up. Yeah, at one up. point in time they did. They used it that way. And I was, uh, I was surprised that the town didn't own it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think Donnie bought it and then sold it back to the town, I think, if I'm not correct. Uh, please correct me, but I think the wheel, I think the wheel, I think it's going to be, uh, if you talk to Alan Clemens about it, he, well, about the wheel. that is a project of the Hanson Historical Commission, and we should have the finished wheel up there this spring. As soon as the water is yeah. high enough, we'll have right, a restored right. wheel on the yep. on the mill, yes. And I heard a long time ago that, that uh, Wampatuck Pond, I don't know how true it is, but I heard that they used to be able to drain that, and then they cattle grazed on it in the summertime. Hmm. And then uh, in the fall they put it, put in the, plug it up again, and then they cut the ice and use the ice on the ice boxes. Really? Because <laughs> uh, I knew that they, over on Factory Pond across the street from me, there used to be an ice house there, and they used to cut the ice and store it in the in the building and and use the ice in the summertime. So that's interesting. That's I one of the things I remember. My grandparent, my grand, uh, my father's mother and father. Uh, on the porch of the house across from Richter's, they had their refrigerator. What street is that on? That's on uh, uh, East Washington Street, okay. and uh, right from the corner near Winter Street. Okay. And uh, they had the ice box outside on the porch, which they they enclosed in, but 
They used to have the ice delivered there a couple times a week. I can remember that. So, can you describe the ice house? Because I don't think anybody's ever mentioned the ice house before. It's, it's well, the, you know, as you go up towards, uh, if you come down from the ski shop on Winter Street and take a right and go on the pond, there's a little cove there of water. Well, just to the left of it, out near the point in the pond, is where the house was. I think the Sagonis was the name was was there when I was a kid growing up. The foundation was there, but I, the building wasn't there when I was there. So uh, I learned this from Eddie Lumberg, hmm. uh, who lived next to the ski shop, uh, next to the yeah next to the ski shop for years. Eddie, he was the grandfather of of Hanson. Uh, so, so they would cut the ice right there. Was it on from they, Furnace Pond or no? It was right on Factory Pond. Factory Pond. I mean. Well, see, they used to put a hole, and then they had these big saws that they used to cut the ice, and then float them down, and somehow store them, get them the out of the house. ice, stack them up, and pack them with hay or whatever in the building, and and uh, that that's what they used for cooling systems because they didn't have any refrigerators back yeah. in those days. Yeah. Because it's 200 years it's been incorporated, but Hanson's been here a lot longer than that. Right, right. Because the water system itself is only over 100 years old. Mm. So. So we have just a few minutes left, but I okay. wanted to know, um, where's your favorite place in Hanson? Favorite place? Be honest with you, home. Uh, you I know, can, that's the answer I, that everyone gives me. I can, <laughs> no, I, I got all my tools and thin toys there. And, uh, but in the summertime, especially after April 1st, when I get to doing the garden, it's fun to go out there and just weed around the vegetables and watch them grow and be able to take fresh corn off the vine and take it in and strip it, throw it in a pot and eat it. I mm -hmm. mean, there's, a, there's nothing better than the vegetables that way. And uh, I save a lot of the plastic bags in the in the winter time. I haven't got too many this year because I've been throwing them away. But uh, no, when the kids come in, you know, they have a free vegetable village, so we say. Mm -hmm. Whenever they want, they just come over and take what they want. So Cause I wind up having like 30 tomato plants and eggplant and butternut squash. I still got squash from last year we're eating that I save and then mm -hmm. it keeps good and uh, peppers and, and uh, hot peppers, summer squash, what else are I, beans, beans I take and freeze. I didn't get to freeze too many this year but last year I still had, I think I got a few packages from about two years ago. <laughs> They're still good and uh, it's organic. Right, right. Every bit of it out of the garden. I love doing that. I like taking care of the yard. Of course, I can't climb trees like I used to and do things like I want to do. But yeah. Now, if you were um, to end the interview, if you were to describe Hanson to somebody who'd never been to Hanson, what would you describe as it's the defining? It's a bedroom community. Bedroom community. All right. Uh, our tax rate is, is some of the lowest in the town, I'll be honest with you. But also, Hanson only charges the businesses the same rate that the residential pays. And uh, because we don't want to lose any more business in town. And uh, I don't know what's going on with the, with the school now. I'm not involved in that anymore, but I, I got to see some friends about me. Because our, our school system is excellent. And uh, <laughs> no, I can't, no. <laughs> I'm laughing to myself, I'm sorry. No, my home, is, my home is the best place to be. As, uh, like I said, I got a little Kabuto backhoe tractor and instead of having to go out and dig something by hand now, I can drive the tractor out and do what I want to do with it. Because uh, I ran heavy equipment all my life and uh, I'm good at it. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll brag about it. But uh, I could feel things in the ground with the bucket when I'm digging that love some people can't. I used to love to run the road grader, hmm. uh, grade roads, because uh, I had a sense of a uh, feeling of grade. It's, it's, just, it's something that was born in my body that some people don't have. 
Uh, I forgot to mention that sophomore year and well, my junior year in high school, I, I wound up going over to the Weymouth Air Base. And uh, I was 16 years old there. And he says, uh, well, you need your parents to sign now. And he said, why don't you wait till you're 17 and you can. So I went over there and May 15th, 1955, I signed up with the U.S. Navy over at Weymouth. And uh, I was in there for 12 years. Oh. Uh, I flew in, uh, but we were in the anti-submarine squadron. And uh, we flew all over the eastern part of the United States. Uh, I was down in Cuba for a while in 1962 when they had the Cuba thing down there. So hmm. it's just, you know, but that was, uh, where else can you go and join something and fly for free? Right. Uh, that's the way I felt about it. I love flying, and where it was a small airplane, there was only a pilot, co-pilot, and two crew at the time. They were using the, uh, I was nothing more than a mechanic in the, in, the, in the Navy, but I also ran the radar in the airplane when it was in, so that they were using two crewmen for, for running the electronics in the airplane. Well, now it was all officers, and uh, it's it was fun. It was really fun. You know, when you're flying mm -hmm. four or five hundred feet off the water, chasing submarines down on Long Island, it's something. It's something a lot of people don't get to do. So. And you were in the service for twelve years. Yeah, well, I was in the reserve. Reserves. I was in the reserve for twelve years. Wow. And yeah. you were in Cuba during the Cuban Missile Crisis. Well, I was down there for a while. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. They they, they were switching squadrons around. You know, go down there for a little bit at a time and. Yeah, you know, it's just another thing in my life that went along with it. I was in the the second year. I was in the reserves. We went to uh, uh, Norfolk, Virginia. No, I remember this so, because I was down there when the uh, Stockholm hit the Andrea Dora in July when we were down there, mm -hmm. and I guess they sent some planes up from Norfolk to take pictures. Of it when they were when it happened, so I, I remember that. Hmm. And another thing, back in 1956 in March, the Etrusco uh, came ashore down in Situate. The what? The, beach, the Etrusco, the Etrusco. cargo ship, came ashore down in Situate Beach, down by the light, and it was parallel with the beach. And uh, Claire and I spent a lot of nights down there parking. And just go down and watch it, and they they eventually put mo moorings out in the in the bay, and uh, they had Alan Wheeler take a he worked a D6 bulldozer down there, and they dug a big trench all the way from the ship all the way out to deeper water, and worked on it low tide, and then on uh, I think it was Thanksgiving, they started pulling and the ship moved and I guess they pulled it out and uh, it floated away. Oh, it was stuck. Yeah, it was stuck it was up stuck. on the beach. Oh. There's a, if you go down to the Situate Light, yeah. there's a plaque around on the ocean side, 1956 when it happened and so forth in the name, and they've got some other. It's interesting to go down to Situate and see that. But yeah. and We don't have anything like that in Hanson. And maybe someday, uh, there's, well, there's a memorial thing but they're trying to, we're trying to put in up to you to the, to the Plymouth County thing in the pack, so. Yep, and we are actually, the the Historical Commission is is uh, pulling together an application with the CPC to do a, a historic markers project all over town. Okay. Um, and so hopefully in the next year we will have uh, historical markers oh, throughout, that's good. throughout town. Oh, yeah. that's good, yes. Yeah. So it's been a joy talking with you. Thank you very much for coming in and spending some time with us. Um, we appreciate all that you've done for the town. I'm still doing it. I love the town. I really do. Good. Some people don't think I do, but I do. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome.